A reading from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning at the 11th verse. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fault. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This whole image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd is an enduring one. You would have seen it on many stained glass windows. There is Jesus with a sheep over his shoulders, bringing it back. He is the Good Shepherd. And what's not to like? It It conjures up a kind of rural idyll. It conjures up all sorts of nice cosy images. I mean, after all, we live in a part of the world where sheep often do dot the hillsides, where we can see the sheep wriggling through the hedges to get free onto the roads. This is an enduring image. And although shepherds may now ride quad bikes rather than put sheep over their shoulders, we can still understand the care that they have for the sheep. We can still think of the whole stresses and strains of the season of lambing. But shepherding in ancient Israel was something of a more, well, it was a more difficult, a more dangerous affair than it is now because it was a much harsher climate. So you would have to take your sheep and take them to safe places in order that they may water. You'd have to tend their injuries because you'd be with them out there in the open often. You didn't have neat fields with hedges around to keep them in. You had to either put them into a sheep pen yourself overnight or guard them from all sorts of beasts that might attack them. And the beasts would attack them. And you would be there to protect them from all that attack. Listen to this. This is the testimony that David, the boy David, gives to King Saul just before he goes out and fights Goliath. This is David saying why he should go out and fight Goliath. Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and where there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. No wonder in Psalm 23 when we read, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me and your rod and staff they comfort me. No wonder when we read that we have some sort of comfort because this is a shepherd who is well armed in Psalm 23, one who is able to keep you safe from attack. And now Jesus stands in front of these Jews and says that he is the good shepherd. Now that may have some echoes of Psalm 23 in their mind. Is Jesus really saying that he is the Lord? But he stands and says that he is the good shepherd. And as he goes on to speak to them, he goes to reveal the scope of his mission. He may be the good shepherd speaking to Jews as their Messiah, but he also has sheep from other folds. His is not a sectarian task. He's not only come to one people or one nation or one group. He's come rather for the whole world, for many languages, and his sheep come from all nations. And what is more, He says that he's prepared to die for the sheep. Now, that may sound noble to you, but as they were listening, they wouldn't have been impressed by this because to ancient ears, to die for the sheep, well, that's rather of a silly thing to do, isn't it? Because if you die protecting that sheep, well, what about the other 99 sheep behind you? They will go unprotected. But Jesus says that he's willing to die for those sheep. 
but if the shepherd dies, won't the rest of the flock just scatter and be lost and end up killed themselves? But Jesus says he's willing to die for them. But what he has in mind, of course, is his laying down of his life so that he may take it up again after. Jesus is not going to stay in the valley of the shadow of death, but rather he will lead people through the valley of the shadow of death again. More echoes of Psalm 23 here, because Jesus is the source of life itself, so he can lay down his life and take it up again. And he has that authority, which is extraordinary. But let me finish with one further implication of all of this passage. If Jesus is the shepherd, then you need to think of yourself as the sheep, and that, frankly, is not that flattering. Sheep are not the brightest. Sheep are prone to wander and to die. Sheep need to follow the shepherd. They have a need of the shepherd. They need to hear and listen for his voice. And so it is that if we are the sheep of Christ, we do need to follow him. We need to follow the path that he leads us through death and not wander off and end up in death. Jesus is the good shepherd. And like the Lord of Psalm 23, he both protects us and leads us through the valley of the shadow of death.